Hello and welcome to UAT Time within the United Country Special by First Ukraine. You can find us on the frequencies available on our website, firstua.com. I'm Sergei Velichansky. And I am Olivier Vedrin. UAT Time is dedicated to bring Ukraine and Europe closer to each other by interesting the Red Ukraine to the rest of the world. Some Ukrainians leave to other countries for better life, and some return. They return as different people with a different worldview and experience. This can be very helpful to us as we build a new society. Our guest today is Sergei Alexeyev, a businessman and a Kiev Line Club representative. All right, thank you. Thank you for coming. Welcome. Great to be here. <laughs> Bienvenue. <laughs> thank you for having me. Yes. Uh, that's all right. We'd love, we love to have uh, new people. And uh, now, give us your story. Like, uh, you're an American citizen. Yes. OK. So, uh, and you are Ukrainian. So tell us. I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> so um, I was born in Ukraine, in Odessa. And my parents decided to move to America in 1990 for, I guess, for a better life, for their yeah. American dream. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, because well, this 1990, was 1990, that was quite a, yeah difficult time yeah because this was around the time of the collapse of the yeah. soviet union so the country was uh going through you know um a lot of change um okay. there were economic problems people you know uh, didn't have uh, food to eat there were bread lines okay. and nobody knew what was going to happen so uh, my parents had an opportunity for a better life in, in the u.s so they moved to new york and uh, i feel like they've com fulfilled the american dream okay. right okay. so Right. Um, you know, uh, fulfilled their professional goals in terms of um, my father has been working in finance in Manhattan for the past uh, 25 years and he's very happy okay. uh, with his life. He's very successful in what he does. And my mother, uh, she's a physicist and she also worked for a multinational uh, financial corporation. So they, they've achieved a lot. Um, um, I, so basically, I finished, finished up school there, um, uh, went to university in London, mm -hmm. graduated from the European Business School, Regents University, with okay. a Master of Finance. Mm -hmm. um, and then went on to work uh, in an investment bank in Dubai. Um, and then I worked in Singapore for a year. Mm -hmm. So I've gotten to see different parts of the world, travel a lot for business. I think I've been to somewhere around 40 countries. Uh, for work, uh, you know, business trips. And um, uh, I've been in Ukraine for four months now. I've been back. All right. Uh, th there was a period of time um, when I didn't go back. Um, uh, between 1990 and 2005, I didn't go back a single time. And then uh, my parents actually had a reunion uh, with their university um, classmates. Uh, I went with them on a trip uh, to Odessa. I loved it. Loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, went back the following year for okay. a couple of weeks. Okay. Went back the year after that for right. a month. Went for a year after that okay. for a couple of months. And I've been coming you know, every year okay. since, since then. Right. Uh, love the country, love the people, love the culture. Uh, feel you know, really a part of it uh, as, as a Ukrainian American. And um, you know, I feel like U Ukraine was missing in my life during those 15 years. So when I came <clears> back, I feel like I rediscovered a part of my, you know, family history, something which was missing in my life. Um, when I saw what was happening during the Euromaidan, mm -hmm. um, I was actually working in Moscow at that time. Uh, I was based in Moscow for a year. Uh, was uh, very upset, very upset, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, but also, um, you know, as time went on, I got hopeful okay. about the changes in the government. Okay, that, hold on, hold on. We'll, we'll talk about this. <laughs> 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 it's like, no, Sergey Alexey is going to tell you the whole story for 25 minutes. But you know, I, you know, I like this man. You know why? Because you come from Odessa. You know? Yes. Odessa. Odessa. This is a yeah. French city because Richelieu. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's correct. why. That's correct. Right. Everybody yeah. in Odessa, uh, I like. Yeah. This is the French most city, French right. city in Ukraine. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, dream That's on. right. Dream Richelieu. on. Dream on. Yes, yes. I've been to Provence and the architecture in Odessa in the old town. Yeah. It's almost the same. Very similar. Because the Duke of Richelieu, you know, built a, the, a new Odessa. Yes. And it was, that was the beginning of the new Odessa because of Duke of Richelieu. All right. All right. Uh, That's why. Some, some glory to well, welcome yeah. Odessa to UET <laughs> time. Okay. <laughs> now, um, now, this time, uh, you've come, looks like, for a little longer. Yes. Uh, that's your intention. Yes. Uh, why? 
I've come to, um, I think, try to help build the new Ukraine. Okay. That's, that's why I'm here. Okay. I want to contribute to society here. I've uh, been here for four months now just doing uh, pro bono charity work, complete, you know, working with nonprofits. Well, talking about charity, uh, Kiev Lions Club. Yes. All right. Now, uh, actually, this is one of the clubs that really need to be uh, made known quite, uh, you know, uh, extent more extensively than it, what it is because it's done so much. Right. So what are your plans in connection with the Kiev Lions Club? Well, uh, Kiev's Lions Club is part of uh, Lions Clubs International, which is actually the world's biggest uh, charity organization. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the Kiev Lions is composed of about, we have somewhere between 80 and 100 members at, at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would say it's 80% expat, uh, American, British, European, and 20% Ukrainian businessmen. Mm -hmm. Uh, CEOs, you know, top managers, this sort of thing. So, uh, uh, the goal of the club is basically to raise money yeah. um, for a charity. So, 100% of all proceeds um, go to charity, and we do this through uh, our events, mm -hmm. right? Uh, fundraisers, yes. live auctions, silent auctions, mm -hmm. um, raffles, different things. So, and, um, you know, we have a few highlight events of the year. We have uh, Kozak Night, which is a uh, Ukrainian theme style mm -hmm. party uh, with Ukrainian music, yes. Ukrainian performers. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and basically at these events, uh, we have a live auction. We also sell the tickets for the Lions Clubs and guests yes. and all the proceeds from this auction go to the charities. Yeah, in the past year, uh do you, do you know the number of uh, money raised? Raised? Yes, um, I, I know that at Kozak Night it was uh, around thirty-five thousand dollars that we raised from that one event. For just one event. Just, just one event. Yeah. Thirty-five thousand dollars. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. They've you know, and then in the course of year, I I, I don't have the figures, but it's uh, you know, much more, and uh, definitely it's quite a uh, uh, you know good and uh, you know vital mm -hmm. uh, investment um, okay where where actually do the money go where in orphan in hospital in uh, which, yes. which well that's Yes, uh, this, this You're money... You're helping, helping Sergei with the answer. He's like, no. Uh, I, I, I know the uh, Lyon Club. You know the right in, answer. In, in, you know, in, in, France, in France, they are very well known in France. Hold on, I'm know. asking specifically. In, in Ukraine, Where? okay. I mean, because so many charities say, you know, I mean, in general, it goes to general need. No, but, no, no. Uh, you know, there is nothing better than a specific need yeah. to be uh, helped. So that's why I'm asking. Uh, our club is very structured, where mm -hmm. we have a donations committee. Every month we have meetings uh, where we have a presentation, proposals for different projects, and we vote on it. Yeah. And uh, whichever project gets the majority of the votes, that's the project that the proceeds will go okay. to. So, okay. for example, supplying medical equipment uh, for veterans of uh, you know the war, mm -hmm. specific war hospital okay. or a children's hospital okay. or an orphanage. Yeah, one one thing why I like this kind of uh, 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 venue, uh, like the Kiev Lions, Lions Club, is every all the members they're so self self sufficient. I mean, seriously, yes. they're yes. so independent in their business and they're successful mm -hmm. that there is no uh, even uh, room for uh, theft or yes. uh, you know cheating or yes. something uh, because people are, uh, I mean, to their reputation and. I mean, they wouldn't be there if they didn't want to help. Uh, you know, they, and they wouldn't be there to make make uh, money off of that because they don't need it. They've got yes, their and own this is uh, you know, CEOs. please, uh, you know, uh, because Lyon is also Lyon's club. A lot of in in France, this is impossible for a member of Lyon's club to to think to to t take some money off a charity event. This is yes. impossible to think well, about that. But, uh, this is not in the mind of a member of the Lions well, Club. And, uh, as far as I understand, it, the structure is built in such a way that the, the accountability yes. is quite uh, you know, extensive there. That, uh, you, and no one really wants to make uh, decisions 
on their own, yes. which is great, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, again, of so many charities or some rumors or some information of, uh, you know, somebody raising money for soldiers or for this yeah. or for that and money go, no yeah. one knows where. So. And, and in Ukraine, you have a lot of examples like that. In Ukraine, you have a lot of examples. I like think, that. unfortunately, you're right. And, and, oh. and also in other other countries, not only in Ukraine. Yeah. Or even in yeah. France, you have some uh, uh, some person who takes France some money. And and, yeah. Um, so, as far as so, uh, Kiev Lions Club, basically, are you going to be involved in some uh, actual business? here or you've got uh, projects going on uh, in other countries how 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 do you see yourself you know real realization of your uh, potential and your uh, great experience well I, I think that my parents came to america with the american dream mm -hmm. i come to ukraine with the uh, ukrainian dream okay. i have the ukrainian dream right. to do something <laughs> great in this country uh, at the moment the last four months uh, I've just been completely volunteering my time, okay. um, uh, giving English classes uh, for the city of Kiev on weekends as well. Yes, 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 yes. <clears throat> uh, I think in, in the long term, my goal is to do something here business-wise, professionally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the moment, it's just been reaching out to the community, helping the community. Okay. Um, but I, I am, I do have plans to stay here because obviously, uh, you know, once uh, my money is not going to last forever yeah. to stay here. so. Uh, definitely looking to uh, grow here professionally and apply my international experience uh, that I've gained in America and Britain and Singapore and Dubai here in Ukraine and hopefully uh, that, that will be useful to, to a business here to grow a business. Yeah. You have some business projects in, in Ukraine? Uh, currently I do not have any business projects no. in Ukraine. I want to join a team, mm -hmm. an organization mm -hmm and help them with my experience, help grow their business and be mm -hmm. part of a team. Okay. And what, what is your, your um, you come from, I can say US, Britain, yes. Yes. international background, and uh, now Ukraine is going to the European Union or the European values. Yes, yes. And um, what do you think about that? And uh, how you can help that? Uh, Ukraine to go to this to this way um, concretely I think I could definitely help Ukraine because um, I was raised in the Western value system mm -hmm. I was educated in the Western value system um, you know I unfortunately the uh, corruption is so ingrained yep. in Ukrainian society you have it at all levels mm. uh, even in the education system here it's yeah. corrupt mm -hmm. unfortunately uh, businesses is corrupt I think you need people um, unfortunately, there, there are many qualified Ukrainian Americans abroad in, um, in America, in Canada, in the UK. Uh, a lot of them don't want to come here because, uh, you know, uh, corruption, bad experiences with the past. They don't trust the system. They say it's a rotten system. I feel if you attract uh, Ukrainian Americans that have Western, uh, you know, Ukrainian, English, Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian Americans, uh, uh, Ukrainian Canadians mm -hmm. to come here and to contribute to the society here. You could really build something great here because you have so many smart people uh, in IT and finance working abroad. Yes. I think this is a big chance for Ukraine to have all those Ukrainian abroad. Um, big, big chance for Ukraine. Well, that's what uh, yeah, we talked yeah. about, uh, uh, talking about the global, uh, yeah. global Ukraine project as well. That's, that's one a of big the things chance. to unite. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so, yes, we, we know of some uh, uh, projects and uh, endeavors to unite people. Because you, you, you will help the change of mentality. Yes. And that's really the first, first step. But change then, the mentality. But then, there, there, there you get, again, the change of mentality happens where? Uh, well, in the in, in high schools, yep. Uh, you know, because w in in uh, colleges and universities, yes. Because if you uh, right now approach thirty and forty year olds, they're not likely gonna change like this yes. if they've never traveled anywhere. Really, yes. I mean, uh, seriously, if uh, you know, if yeah, when you travel, mm -hmm. then you you really change. You kind of notice things that you never thought. The, 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 this is the problem but, in Ukraine. Uh, for example, you know, I, I talked about also, also about this example a lot of times. Uh, 
take the example of Oblast, uh, Lugansk Oblast. Yes. Why the propaganda, Russian propaganda is efficient? Because more than 90% of the citizens of the Oblast of Lugansk never never Traveled outside, outside of, the of, of, yeah. of the blast. So yeah. that's ninety uh, percent. Can you imagine? Yes, uh, I think I think the issue is that um, uh, my friend just recently came here from Britain, and he said he was looking at different problems in the airport. You know, inefficiencies, problems, and he said the people in Ukraine, why don't they complain? And I told him it's because people are trying to survive. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, if, if they don't have food, shelter, you know, basic needs, they can't think about complaining about bigger issues because they're just trying to survive. So I think... Well, with the complaint uh, thing, uh, you can't live in the mode of complaint all the time. You pretty much then sometimes sort out, okay, these things I don't want to bother any more because I'm too overreacting and, I'm, and nothing works out. So, right. so that's why sometimes we settle for with some uh, little things and concentrate on some priorities, you know. And so, and and it's worldwide. Every everybody is doing that. Uh, you know, same thing in America as well. You know, or in France, yeah. when uh, you know people see that okay, in, on this level something doesn't work, and he's getting tired and worn out, then he stops being active there, but he settles for something else. That's the adjustment that, you know, the humans do. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> uh, we, uh, you know, we, uh, we need more of, uh, like, uh, you know, guys like you uh, that have uh, the patriotic feel, the, the pull from Ukraine soil, you know, to come back and you have more emotional ties with the country rather than like even you know you or others mm -hmm. because uh, y you have your own you know uh, things and, and uh, likes and, and, and dislikes but you know you are you feel the the uh, the uh, uh, Attached, motherland, yes, uh, to the motherland. history, yes, to the history, yes, because yes. my, you know, my grandparents and great grandparents and their parents, they were all here. You know, uh, I didn't mean to offend you, man, but seriously, no. But th this is this is a, yeah. uh, but you know, no, uh, yes, okay, you this know, this is a special, yeah. But uh, this is very really different for my my motivation is uh, European motivation. I help, you, I help oh, you trying to go yeah. to the European well, Union. Well, that's 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 uh, no doubt about that. But what I'm saying is. But uh, this another factor, and more, uh, and there are people like this, yes. uh, like you, a lot. There are uh, all over. How to get them? Uh, how to let them? Uh, allow them to plug in on the level of expertise where they are. That's the challenge. How to integrate them? Yes, I think that's a big challenge, and I think maybe that's something the government could help with. Create some kind of program for. A resource for integrating. Um, Do you think the government will really care about that? I mean, there's so much in transition, and you know, so much in um, you know, so many things happening. I think it's uh, it's all about just us, the citizens. Sometimes mm -hmm. I think also don't forget they have the pressure of U.S. and EU to change. Yes, yes. yes. And the pressure of EU, for example, is. Uh, very very strong because we are giving money yes and we and we want to give money for something yes and uh, the pressure will be we will increase the pressure if we will not have some results yeah i like that actually because in reality it's like a teenager he needs to have an accountability he needs to have somebody you know tell them okay don't go there don't do this stop doing this you know yes. Uh, or you need to change your behavior. Mm. Uh, I, no, seriously, I like that. That's why I'm, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> you are the pressure. All right. Uh, boy. Um, I am the high of, 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 of Brussels, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, um, now, um, what do you think uh, uh, the difference, uh, about the difference in culture, uh, or in the business culture, or, uh, just, uh, you know, have you faced any major uh, differences in uh, the way things are done? Uh, yes, uh, certainly there are many differences. Uh, I feel like in Ukraine at the moment it's uh, mostly relationship based. Uh -huh. uh, it's not as structured okay. as it is in the West. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, for example, you know, people want to get to know you first, uh, go out to dinner before, you know, receiving your business proposal. Okay. Whereas in, you know, in, in America, they want to get the business proposal, then they think about it, and then, you know, let's meet for lunch. So okay. I'd right. say that's, right. that's a different way of doing okay. things. That's, that's probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this, is very difficult, this is very difficult, for example, to explain in university to the student was is European lobbying and the difference between lobbying in Western countries and business in Ukraine. <laughs> and this is the same. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somehow you, uh, you know, the longer you live here, the, long, the more you kind of find the ways to bring illustrations no, to, to show, to educate, understand, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. because, uh, I mean, in, one, in, some, in some cases, uh, it's just, that's the way it is. It's good. It's, yeah. it's cultural uh, yeah. identity. That's the way. I mean, yes, we do want to have uh, a lunch meeting because before we move into, you know, business or whatever, I want to know who who I'm dealing with. Right. And, you know, uh, but so, but it's good. I like it. I like it in a sense. But then uh, the, it motivates you to be more effective in yeah. your educational. Yeah. Really try to find the strengths to play as far as, you know, communicating your yeah. mission, your, your vision, you know. Uh, what do you uh, think? We've got uh, actually several minutes left. Uh, but um, so what do you think uh, as far as uh, uh, future, as far as peace, as far as uh, relationship with Russia in general? What are your thoughts? Uh, the relationship with Russia is obviously a very difficult topic. Um, the biggest border of Ukraine is with Russia, obviously. Yeah. So the border needs to be secure. Uh, I feel like there needs to be um, an agreement in place, a structured agreement in place, uh, because uh, it would be great if there was a business partnership, like, like a long-term business partnership. At the moment, this is not possible, because I think that uh, Russia was the uh, biggest trading partner of mm -hmm. uh, Ukraine. Well, yeah. And, you know, the, there are some historic ties, so I, Be Before you know, they started shelling our territory. It's, it's very unfortunate yeah. that, you know, what, what's happened. It's unfortunate that people have died. Um, uh, I'm just, you know, uh, for peace. I want there to be peace. Um, and hopefully there, there will be a mutual cooperation going forward because it's uh, very bad, you know, when you have two countries uh, which share the biggest border, which, you know, are very hostile towards each other, you know, it, 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 that's obviously um, not good. So there needs to be peace uh, going forward. Yeah, but we're talking about quite a few years ahead. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and uh, not many steps by you know Russia have been taken at this point because you, you know Ukraine now <coughs> has stopped the uh, active uh, war, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the active uh, or being active in the war uh, has, has uh, consented to have the Minsk deal signed and is not really at this point attacking Russia about Crimea. Mm -hmm. So U Ukraine has done so much. Right. But there is not, uh, you know. We are waiting some goodwill from Russia. Right. Well, and in the meantime, uh, we will be doing what we need to do as yep. far as keeping people informed in what is happening mm -hmm. in Ukraine. And uh, let's, uh, you know, we want to encourage you to Let's, uh, you know, br bring in all you've got as far as ex experience and your, you know, uh, management uh, approach and uh, education and contacts and uh, whatever, investors, anything, any, anyone, anything you've got, bring it in. <laughs> Ukraine will, uh, needs it. Ukraine needs it as, uh, you know, fresh fresh blood. Yeah. yeah, I think it's all about uh, cooperation. We need yeah. to work together. People need to work together to get things done uh, because we could do so much more, uh, you know, uh, if we combine, you know, our talents and strengths and, you know, try to work together towards a solution. And let's, let's do that. Thank you for being Thank with you. us. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very Pleasure. much. Thank you.
It was United Country UAT time by First Ukraine. Our guest was Sergei Alexeyev, a businessman and a Kyiv Lion Club representative. Olivier Derin and Sergei Velichansky were working for you in the studio. Stay with us and we will show to you the really crane. Thank you for being with us. Have a good day and see you soon. Thank you.